YouTube is dominated by the DSLR. We all live in the shadow of the mighty, big censored, interchangeable lens cameras, and we take those and we attach all sorts of nonsense to them to get what we want. But what if I told you there was a camera out there that had built-in XLR, built-in stabilization, built-in zoom lens, great autofocus, and built-in ND? You'd think I'm crazy, right? Well, that is slightly the case, but I present to you the Sony NX80. Is it any good? Let's find out. What's up everyone? I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. So this is like my most daddest moment, right? I feel like I've finally come into my own as the guy that shows up to every family event with my trusty Sony camcorder, like all the dads before me. Oh, oh, yep, you're doing that, you're doing that good. Awesome, yeah, cut that cake. Oh yeah. I've never actually considered a camcorder before until sorting out my gear for CES that I'm currently at while you watch this, but once you start seeing all of the features and specs, it's actually kind of a remarkable piece of kit. And you know what else is awesome about camcorders? They don't take photos, because spoilers, I'm not a photographer. It's so much easier. Physically, this is a very small package. In fact, it's not much bigger than a very common main camera setup that you might be looking at if you wanna make online video. Since most new mirrorless cameras don't have flip out screens, I use a monitor. And with the monitor comes additional stuff like cables, batteries, probably a cage, like all sorts of extra stuff that you gotta, again, attach onto there. You can even make the NX80 smaller by taking off the top handle. Look at that. Which segues really nicely into the top handle. This thing attaches straight into the hot shoe mount, but once it's on, it gives you pro level XLR inputs as audio is the most important part of video production, this is a huge benefit. I mean, all of these little knobs on the XLR controls feel great, and they let you manually control gain instead of having to use an internal menu, which is so much better. The camera body itself is also stacked with great features. Now, as an interchangeable lens guy myself, some of this terminology sounds a little different, but works out much the same. For example, ISO on a hybrid camera is called gain on a camera like the NX80, but you get responsive physical controls for everything, which means much like the audio dials, that's great. And that's doubly great because as we'll mention the fiddliness category, the menu system of this camera isn't the most welcoming. But enough of that for now, I don't, I don't wanna skip ahead. Let's, let's pique your interest a little bit as you continue on. When it comes to recording media, the NX80 takes two SD cards. And for battery life, it uses these, I mean, look at this thing. It uses these cute little Sony MP batteries that are like the teeny tiny little brother of the other MP batteries that literally litter everybody on the planet Earth's studio space. My biggest complaint about the physical body of the camera is while they included several recording buttons, I mean, there's a recording button here, there's a recording button here, there's two recording buttons. They only included one joystick. Now that's not a big deal if you always handhold the camera like this. I mean, depending on hand size, it's actually it's actually pretty hard for me to thumb reach to use this joystick. But if you never use the camera like that, it's always weird to move around to change the settings inside the menu system. Like if you're in front of the camera, you gotta like reach behind it to like change it up. It's, I really wish they'd added another joystick to the top of the handle. But the thing that I really like about the physical body is the screen. It articulates in ways that I wish every camera screen would articulate. Not only that, but it has very nice video features such as focus peaking, audio levels, and it's big enough that even if you are in front of the camera and are a bit out of reach because of the zoom range, you can still see what's going on the screen. I mean, the screen on this camera is so good. But let's get into the three things that matter most if we wanna use this as a camera for online content creation. First up, image quality. The NX80 can record in up to 4K 30 frames per second and 1080p up to 120 frames per second. Like the RX100 series, it can also do super slow motion up to 960 frames per second, but I find that the quality drops off after around 240 frames per second. It has a one inch Exmor R CMOS sensor, again, much like the newer RX100 cameras. I mean, basically it's like a super powered RX100 
Like it's like the RX 1000 basically. Built in are three different settings of ND, which is super useful if you're shooting outdoors in any way, shape or form. And it comes with a 12 times optical zoom with an additional 6X with the Sony Digital Clear Image Zoom. I think the image quality, much like the RX series, is actually really good. If you are used to working with larger censored cameras, you will have to take especially good care of using the camera in low light. I find that even a slight increase in the gain will absolutely start to introduce noise into the image. Now, that might not be a big deal for you depending on what your distribution platform requires, but for me, I don't like having that much noise in my video, especially when we talk about indoor stuff. Besides that, I think the slow motion works great, the built-in stabilization is great, so much about the image quality coming out of this camera is frankly awesome, and it's even more so because you don't need to change lenses. It all just works. You also don't have to worry about autofocus. It has Sony's awesome phase detection autofocus. You just, I mean, you don't have to carry around anything but the camera to get good quality out of it. But don't take my word for it. Let's hop outside for the most important to test to find out, can it vlog? Hmm? <laughs> but now it's time to find out the most important part. Can it vlog? I mean, we can do all this. We can talk about how great all the other video features are, right? But can it vlog? That's the most important part. We're gonna find out right now. Vlogging test begin, whoa. Whoa. Okay, so welcome to the vlogging test of the Sony NX80. Now I do have it on the Manfrotto Pixie with the extendable legs because it does, like its widest setting is about 28 millimeter, which is pretty tight when it comes to vlogging. But yeah, this is the image quality you can expect to get. Ooh, the sun's in the way. This is the image quality you can expect to get out of a camcorder. Now what's so great about this is that it literally has everything that you could want for vlogging built inside of it. It's got ND, it's got stabilization, it's got the flip screen, it's got great autofocus. It like has everything you could ever want. And it's honestly, it's not that, I'm like right in the, okay, hopefully now we will not have that bar in our face anymore. And it's not that much heavier than say a mirrorless camera if you wanna use something like the a7 III or a Lumix camera or something like that. It's not that heavy, but you get so much more. Like I'm incredibly, incredibly impressed. Not only do you get all of those features, all of that specs, all of that stuff, it's just really usable. And we'll talk more about that in fiddliness, but like, it's just so easy. Like I'm really shocked at both how easy it is and how much I like using it in this kind of situation. Now indoors, as we'll find out here in a second, it's a little weaker, but if you're outdoors, like we got all the ND on right now because the sun's like, right up in our grill. <laughs> it's so bright out, I can't even really see the screen. I can see it a little bit. I can see it enough to know that we're in focus and that the audio is doing pretty well. And as audio goes, we took off the XLR handle because we didn't need it. Because we're just using a Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. So why put on all that weight? You can make it even smaller, which is so awesome. Uh, yeah, I'm really, really impressed with this camera. Let's, man, I'm not impressed with the sun though. Sun, get out of my, there we, like right about there. Nope, nope, there's a, there we go, okay. Vlogging test complete, back to the video. <laughs> and this is the indoor slash studio test of the Sony NX80. So this is the exact same setup that you just saw a few moments ago with my normal studio camera. The audio is through my Rode VideoMic Pro Plus going straight into the NX80 because it was just, it's super easy to do. I really like the audio coming out of the NX80. And this is what, if you're planning on using it as an indoors camera, this is what you can see. One of the things that, uh, you know, one of the things that I don't like about this camcorder is because it has a one inch sensor, the second you hit the gain up just a little bit, uh, all of a sudden the image quality, like there is total noise in the image. And right now we're zoomed in a little bit and we're at F3.4, I can see on the screen right there. We're at F3.4, so that's pretty close for an indoor camera. So we've got the light bump like all, it's like blinding me how bright it is. But this is the indoor image quality. This is what you can expect. The autofocus is, I mean, the autofocus is amazing. I can see it's got the little box around my face right now because it's got a, it's a Sony camera with a flip out screen. Why can't all Sony cameras have flip out screens? That would be amazing. But yeah, so this is the image quality you can expect. Back to the video. <laughs> little T-Rex, <laughs> you're so far away. <laughs> now that we've covered, you know, what cameras can actually do, it's time for the most important aspect for me, which is how easy is it to get that image quality? And I call that fiddliness. What is fiddliness? Fiddliness is how hard is it to get the image that you want out of the camera. So there's really two parts of fiddliness. How easy is it to set the camera up before you hit record? And then how easy is it to get the footage you want 
after you hit record. Now, when it comes to a camcorder like the NX80, uh, it's really easy to set it up the way you want. I mean, look, it's got a thousand manual buttons. It's got pro level features that you can get basically everything you want to set up out of it. You can set the ring up front to be zoom or focus. You've got an autofocus, manual focus button on the front. You just got, you've got everything. Um, and it's just so, it's incredibly easy to set it up the way that you want it. But once you hit record, how easy is it to use? Now I look for two main things when it comes to after hitting record, when it comes to ease of use. One, how good is the autofocus? And the NX80, as we already saw, has Sony's really good phase detection autofocus. So you don't have to worry about whether you or whatever subject you're trying to get is in focus because it just works. Like Sony has started to crush it in the autofocus department. Like we're on a Canon right now and the Canon has dual pixel autofocus, which is really good, but Sony's really chasing after him. Number two, does it have some kind of way to know that you're recording and to monitor it once you hit record? Like a flip screen is kind of the generalized way to say that, but does it have a flip screen? Can you see what's going on without rigging up a huge system? And yes, with the NX80, you get both. You get awesome autofocus. You can see what you're doing as you're using it. Like it is incredibly powerful. Like that, I don't know why we don't like camcorders more. I'm, I'm just incredibly, incredibly impressed with how easy this darn thing is to use. It is one of the least fiddly cameras I have ever checked out here on the Everyday Dad. So I, it's just easy to use. Back to the video. <laughs> I wonder how much of these jump transitions these chairs can take. Hopefully not many, because I do hate these chairs. Watch the live streams. And last, but actually kind of least for this kind of camera, ecosystem. Like we mentioned in the opening, this is really an all-in-one package. So you don't, you don't really need any accessories to get the most out of the camera. It already has XLR, it already has ND, and you can even, if you want to, you can even add more ND to the filter. It's got a filter thread on the front, so if you do want to, it's there, I mean, but you don't need to. And it already has great stabilization. Not only that, but something that a lot of hybrid cameras have problems with is you can plug this straight into the wall with the included power adapter. This is really the first camera I've used that I can say you don't really need anything else. It, it just works well on its own, like it is an all-in-one package. I know I've said that a lot, that doesn't make it any less true. So what, right? So should you get a Sony NX80? Maybe? Now, I've been using this one for about two to three weeks now, and I really like everything that comes packaged with the camera. It's, I mean, I say this about the RX cameras, but this is, in fact, a solo studio. I like how the audio sounds. I like how the image quality looks. I like a lot about this camera. But it is kind of expensive, coming in at $2,200. That's in the same price range as a fully kitted out X-T3 or an A7 III with the kit lens. So is the built-in ND and XLR worth that price? For me personally, not really. While I can appreciate this system as a whole, it's just too expensive for what you get if you were like me making YouTube videos. Now again, as a pro, which I am not, maybe it would work better for you so you can create your videos you know, on the go. Maybe you need the uh, more pro features of this. At $2,200, I can't think of better ways to spend your money, but if you do just want a single camera that can do it all, maybe look at the AX700, which is basically the NX80 without the top handle. But if you absolutely have to have XLR, have to have built-in ND, and have to have the smallest form factor available, then yeah, I would have no problems recommending the NX80. It's actually a great camera, but for the rest of us making online videos, I still think that interchangeable lens cameras reign supreme. That larger sensor giving you better low light, uh, it's just gonna work a little better. However, we're gonna put that to the test on Wednesday as we compare a full-frame mirrorless camera to the NX80. See you there. Thanks for watching, I normally say that. Thanks for watching.